the recession. It ain't some distant problem we can't see. It's not a maybe or if scenario, not anymore. It's here right now, and this one's gonna be brutal. It's gonna linger a long, long time. Now, why? there's a debate as to how bad this will be. In other words, will it linger or turn into a depression? Know this one certainty. All the so-called smart people in Washington were caught completely by surprise. It's amazing, actually. But if you watch my previous episodes, you know I've been talking about this for a very long time. So make sure you hit subscribe because you don't want to miss future episodes. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Wired for Wealth, guiding you to achieve lasting financial freedom and peace of mind. I'm your host, John McGregor, your antidote to your financial struggles. All right, let's dig in. This is a really important episode because things are getting ugly. You can no longer bury your head in the sand expecting everything will be okay. You have to be aware of this because as I always say, what you are aware of, you can control and identify opportunities, but what you are not aware of will always, always control you. Right now, all the markers are in place that signal a significant downward trend that is rapidly approaching. And what happens to most people during recessions? Most people lose money, a lot of it. They lose wealth, massive amounts of it. Businesses die and so do the spirits and will to fight for so many people, especially if they lose hope and don't see any way out of the mire that they're in. I mean, right now, 50% of small business owners, 50% surveyed do not believe their business will survive by the end of the year. I mean, think about that, 50%, it's, it's astonishing. But the one common thread, the thing, the thing that an overwhelming majority of people have in common when they go through a recession is this, missed opportunities. They lose a lot of money, jobs, and hope for their future. And this can affect relationships, increasing in divorce rates, breakups. And when that happens, even more financial turmoil occurs. Many things are happening right now economically, not just in the United States, but all over the world. You know, there's a saying that a butterfly flaps its wings in China, you can have rain in Florida. What that essentially means is that even the smallest things that happen on the other side of the world financially can have massive re repercussions down the road on the other side of the planet. So what happens all over the world affects everyone, <clears throat> not just your own country, not just here in the United States, it affects everyone. So if something bad going on in China or Europe, anywhere, can have a radical impact on our lives. Now, while you hear plenty of pundits and bureaucrats, politicians, and even the so-called financial experts pontificating on how, oh, we're just at the tail end of this minor recession and things are gonna dramatically improve, I want you to think about a few key details to put this all into perspective. Since 2008, the Federal Reserve, which by the way, is a private bank, that's right, a private bank, not connected to the government in any way, that essentially controls the currency of the United States, has been printing money hand over fist. They did this initially to help us navigate out of our great recession in 08. What it did was pump a lot, a ton of money into the economy. And why'd they do this? We had a massive housing crisis and financial meltdown, and many people lost their homes. And those, were, those who were able to hold onto them were underwater, so to speak, meaning that the mortgage they owned was higher than the value of their house. Home values today have certainly increased and gone way overboard since the beginning of the pandemic. But what about all of that printing of the money? Well, it was refer that was referred to quantitative easing, where for years, the Federal Reserve kept printing and printing and printing money out of thin air in order to float the economy with dollars as the way to shore up this economy. And at the peak of quantitative easing, the Federal Reserve was printing somewhere around $80 billion in fake, phony monopoly money. Now sure, it boosted the economy for sure, but it was all done artificially. And as a result, the stock market and other assets kept rising and expanding just like a balloon. And you know what happens when a balloon has, has too much air and no more, no more capacity for any more? It explodes, right? Of all the US dollars ever created in the history of this country, in the history of the US, of all the money ever created, 40% of the money created was created in the last 12 months. I mean, that just tells you how much printing of monopoly money has occurred. I mean, that's staggering. But anyone who's looking at things honestly, sees there are so many bubbles ready to burst. And now, 
As you know, we're seeing historic levels of inflation as a result of this monetary policy. And with all this money that's been printing, this inflation, we've got a long way to go until it subsides. And they say inflation's now at, what, 9%? Sorry, but that's total BS. Tell me anything that's up less than 9%. And if they were being honest, they would admit the real number is closer to 20%, not 9 And who suffers the most? Well, of course, it's the middle and lower class families. They're being squeezed like never before, and this administration is doing nothing to stop it, nothing. In fact, they're doubling down on stupid, on purpose, in my opinion. And inflation is just one component of the puzzle. When you realize that private and public pensions are underfunded anywhere between 91 and $120 trillion, and Social Security is gonna run out of money in 10 years or so, the warning bells are blaring. But is anyone listening? Look, no one can predict with full certainty how bad this will get, but talk to people in the know and you will hear the same thing repeated over and over again. There's a massive bubble ready to pop or explode. When it does, that's gonna be your opportunity to generate an incredible amount of wealth if you prepare for it now and know how to take advantage of it when it hits. So I wanna offer a few things to think about, and I mean really think about as we're all dealing with these really times of economic uncertainty and, and headed into this eye of the storm as I believe we are. So three things I wanna discuss. The first one is do not panic. What you want to avoid is doing what everyone else seems to be doing, do, doing in those moments, which is panic. And what is panic? Well, panic really is just a human emotion, right? Well, in all of history, human emotions can be a great destroyer of wealth. And panic has a nasty habit of driving people to make poor financial decisions, especially when they see their investments, their portfolio for retirement, their bank accounts take a big hit. Too often the market is dominated by irrational behavior. So don't, please, don't fall into the trap of being a lemming, just following along doing what everyone else is doing. If all those people are rushing towards certain investments, that's when you should step back, turn around, or at least really analyze what you're doing. Now is the time to be looking for opportunities to pounce on when things, to, when things appear to have bottomed out. And that could be real estate, stocks, and other things that you can pick up on the cheap. Number two, this is not the time to be splurging on things you do not need. Honestly, far too, people, far too many people get caught in this idea that they need to look the part, that they deserve every luxury and want their high school friends or, or people they barely knew in high school but now connect with on Facebook to think highly of them. So they buy the house that's far too big or, or, or constantly purchasing a new car every couple of years and are spending way too much money on things they don't need. These are the ones what I call are in the 80% club. That's the 80% of full-time working adults in America who are living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, it's staggering and it's tragic. And what's worse, they're losing a ton of money on depreciation of those assets and all the other expenses that they're spending money on. Appearance matters more than anything to far too many people. And in our society, slick marketing campaigns and well-targeted advertisements have led us all to believe we deserve it and we should just do it. Sure, you deserve it, I'll give you that, but that doesn't mean you should do it. Focus on building assets and income. And there's so many things you've been doing on the side to generate cash flow. Hundreds, if not thousands of things. And there are millions of side hustles and side businesses. I personally use a very simple stock option strategy. It's a trading strategy, very simple, that generates significant cash flow and capital appreciation, and you can do the same. But here's what I would do. Before you get into anything like that, I would set a minimum goal to create at least $1,000, that's right, $1,000 in free cash flow every single month. And that could come from increasing your cash flow or cutting your expenses. But the goal should be at least $1,000 per month. Or $33, $33 a day. You can do this. And here's an example. When my wife and I travel, we have to hire a dog walker. It's $25 per half hour. And we need her twice a day. There are just, that, that's just an example. But it's something you could be doing. And there's just so many ways you can do this. Start building your nest egg today. But again, now is not the time to upgrade your flat screen TV or your iPhone, no matter how old it is. Yours is working just fine. Now is the time to prepare yourself and keep building cash and equity where you can, and when the bottom hits, you'll be in the best position to pounce on great investments like real estate or the stock market that has dropped in value. 
You want to buy good assets on sale, and by positioning yourself correctly, you'll be able to do so. And here's another thought. Think of all the small businesses in your community with good track records and brand recognition. Perhaps it's a mom and pop family owned business who now want to, want to cash out. They're in their 60s or their 70s and they own a long standing business in the community and they're tired and they want to retire. There will be a ton of opportunities to step in and buy them out, perhaps at a great price. And many will offer seller financing. That's a great great thought for you to consider and there's all kinds of places to go to identify these these businesses that are up for sale or thinking about it being uh, going for sale all right finally number three negotiate everything negotiate everything when the market drops or craters or collapses during a recession you should be more concerned about keeping the lights on and having food on the table than having the latest iphone or video game console you should be more concerned about that because of that Manufacturers and retailers are going to be dropping their prices. You'll find many local businesses will be willing to drop their prices as well, even to almost what they paid for them, just to cover the cost and avoid losing on every single item they have in stock. So I would urge you to shop local and be willing to haggle. Today, many of the big chain retail stores don't even bother negotiating with customers. Mom and pop shops will certainly be willing to listen to an offer that is reasonable. But if you go to a manager at a big chain store and try to offer less than sticker price, typically they'll shrug their shoulders and say, no, they can't do it. R rigidity is built in their system. However, however, during recessions, especially deeper recessions, even those big mega chain stores are gonna offer more deals and be willing to take less than the asking price. They want the sale, that's the bottom line. But if you wanna help your local economy best, which I urge you to do, shop local. Shop from the smaller businesses. Go in there and haggle. Offer less than what they're asking for and be willing to walk away. But of course, be reasonable and fair. While this isn't gonna get you rich, it can certainly save you a ton of money over many months or years while the nation or this world tries to dig its way out of this recession. And, and it'll get you closer to that $1,000 per month goal that we talked about. And also, also, you definitely want to renegotiate interest rates. I know interest rates have climbed, climbed a little bit, but still a lot of you are paying way too much in interest, um, even with rising interest rates. Whether it's your mortgage, your car loan, your credit cards, or anything else, a recession is the perfect time to negotiate for lower interest rates. As I mentioned, banks lower their interest rates because they want to instigate buying, right? You can't sell more items if people aren't buying. So, so when they lower interest rates, people are willing to borrow more to buy things they want or need during those tough times. Make sense? If you have good credit and some of your cards have what you consider to be a little bit higher in interest than they should be, contact those companies and negotiate. I'll tell you, they are willing to listen. You'll also find plenty of offers for zero or low interest rate loans for one or two years or whatever it may be, and you can transfer the balances from your higher interest cards to the lower ones. And finally, Look at all the services you pay for. Netflix, uh, car insurance, your cell phone, cable bills. Call them and start asking for a better deal. Did you know that on average, 40% of people are paying more for car insurance than they should be? Now, be very careful when lowering your coverage. I'm not suggesting that. What I'm saying is that you need to shop around for the best deals. And here's a perfect example. I have Sirius satellite radio in my car. And for years, I was paying $30 per month. I actually kind of forgot about it. I finally saw the bill and I thought, wow, this is outrageous. So I decided, I decided to call them. And I should have done this sooner. And I told them that I was terminating their service because it was too expensive. The rep told me, he said, hold on, let me check with someone. He came back within a few minutes and he said, how's $7 per month sound? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I was shocked that they would lower it that much. It was amazing. Now, as a result of that phone call, took me seven minutes, I'm saving $23 per month or $276 per year just because I picked up the phone and asked. So, let's stop there. I hope that was helpful. And if anything, I hope that propels you to take action and get serious. Now is the time. So I wanna leave you with this one parting thought. You know, in the 27 years I've been coaching people of all walks of life, what I discovered is that there's a big difference between those who thrive in life or crush it and those that continue to survive or shred water. 
Those people who crush it, regardless of the economy or what's going on in the world, have a different mindset. That's the key. That's the difference. They don't have the same mental blocks holding them back as others do. They're passionate about their goals and they have a clear vision of their future. And hence, distractions never get in their way, regardless of what's going on in the economy. And this has nothing to do with their education, their financial literacy, their upbringing, or any of those external factors. It's rooted, in a much, it's rooted much deeper than any of those external issues. And this mindset I'm talking about can be acquired. And I will say, in the past 10 years of teaching this process, anyone can achieve the financial life they desire. Anyone. But in order to do that, you have to take a deep, deeper look into yourself, your history, your mindset, your beliefs. This is what my revolutionary system, Thrive Path, is all about, and that's what we focus on. I would highly recommend you check out Thrive Path on my website today. I've been teaching this system around the world at live events, and now you can have access to, access to it in your own home. I created this so you can and will live financially free and with peace and prosperity the rest of your life, rather than stumbling around like so many people do, especially given everything that's going on today. It really is a game changer, and there's no better time for Thrive Path than today. All right. Now, go get ready to win. Follow those instructions, start negotiating, curtail your expenses, start identifying opportunities to invest in, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Till next time, upward and onward, take care, bye-bye.